Hey YouTube, um, give you update video so you can see how far along I got with the Team Durango DX410R. Um, not try to talk too long. A couple things during the build, um, and this will just be basic build stuff that I want to, you know, anybody's interested in, um, to do the build. This will might help them. A uh, couple fitment issues. I'm using the carbon fiber shock towers instead of the aluminum ones. I didn't try to see how the aluminums fit, but I had fitment issues with the carbon fiber shock towers fitting into the diff case or diff housing case, front diff housing case. I had a trim, it slide, this piece slides down in there, there's a little notch in there, and I had to um, dremel or you know, sand about one and a half um, mm there so it would fit in there um, that's that's was not a big deal that was pretty simple if you don't have a general might be a big deal if you don't have a file you should probably have some um, hand files small hand files that you can take a little bit off um, but that was that was one fitment issue the other fitment issue I had is attaching this part to the chassis down in here um, that plastic is real thin down through there. They bevel it in or bevel it out a little bit so the A-arms don't rub against it. And when you put the um, hinge hinge pins in there, hin excuse me, hinge pin in there, um, it gives you plenty of space. Now, I noticed when they did that, it leaves very, very little for the screw on the bottom to tap into. So as you drill that as you screw that in it starts spreading that plastic out and I had one spot on it in there actually start to crack just by putting putting uh, the screw in so I I'd, I'd recommend before you screw it onto the chassis take the part hand screw it and, and see how that is and if you start seeing the plastic turn white in a spot that means that it's starting to break and it's spreading that plastic out so you got you got two options. You can, I guess, tap it or drill it out. If you have a drill, um, you can drill that hole out a little, just a hair, so the screw doesn't crack that spot. Because, like I said, it's pretty thin in there, and it just doesn't give it a lot of space. As that screw goes in there, it's pushing that plastic out. Um, but it seems pretty. I mean, it seems pretty solid. I don't. I mean, it's it's in there. Uh, the other thing was your diffs. I built these diffs and I know you saw the video of it um, earlier but when I built this diff <clears throat> I shimmed it to what's in, in here. Well the diff, the outdrive cups had a little bit of play more than what I like so I added another shim on this side or I guess on the bevel gear side not the plastic housing side on this side I added another shim and it, it firmed it up and it's way better. Now the the rear diff is set up to specs in the manual. I'm gonna to have to pull it out, add another shim, and it should it should fix that up. Because this is there's a big difference in this versus the one I didn't shim. Um and there's a more way more play in the in the outdrive cups than what there probably should be. So just be aware of that. Everybody Shim, everybody builds their just differently. I mean, you build to the specs in here, but you know some people's need more shims than others. That's just not you know. You have to just look for that and add it if you think you need it. Um, the other thing, and this will be this. I'll finish up on this part so the video is not 15 minutes long. This centerpiece where your slipper clutch is. And this is how you get to the battery, you pull this out, drive, drive line comes out, pop that open, your battery comes out. When you are putting this back in, this is cut straight off. It's not rounded. So I was getting a little bit of fitment issue in here when I would slide in. And when it hits that plastic, it was catching. And I couldn't get it all the way in. Now it just slides right in and, and I can snap it in. All I did was take the Dremel and round off the edges here just round it off I didn't you know I, I rounded them down a little bit so they're nice and smooth and it slides right in 
that was the other fitment issue, and it's, again, not a big deal. Um, doesn't kill a kid or anything. It's, it's, you know, it's not, it's, it is what it is. It's pretty easy to fix. Um, the other thing, just so when you're building for the new guys, <coughs> you know, the spacers, uh, when you look at the spacers, make sure you get the spacers um, the right way. Um, if you look on the spacers, and these go in the hinge pins areas, one side will be nothing. It'll be straight flush. The other side will have a little indentation, and I'm talking a slight indentation. What that indentation is for is the washer side. For example, you got your washer. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but your washer will is meant for that spot there so just make sure you don't get it the opposite way I mean even if you did not a big deal um, but that's what that's designed for and last this is it promise when you're screwing this part in here just make sure your nut is sitting all the way down in there and not partially up because when you're when you're screwing that screw in on the bottom and it comes into here. If it's not seated all the way down in there, and as you're screwing it, it could it could start spinning in there, and it could overlap that plastic, and then you won't have any way to tighten it down. So you got to be careful there. I almost did that, and then I caught myself and got it out, and then seated it and, and finished it up. But again, so far I like the kit. Um, easy build. I mean. Fitment, you know, just a couple small fitment issues, but overall everything else has gone together real good. Uh, I'll get another video up, and um, thanks for watching.